Hi everyone, I'm Jack the Rambling Rack and I hope that you're doing well. I want to continue the library tour by setting sail with the Viking Portable Library, focusing specifically on their editions that they published after they were acquired by Penguin Classics and sort of the 1970s, 1980s editions of the uh, Viking Portable Library. So we still have the Viking Portable Library, we still have the Penguin Classics spine, and uh, most of these are going to be focused on a single writer rather than a period of writing as I had done in a previous video. Uh, these ones have a picture of architecture, sometimes a cityscape or a landscape, and then a photo of the writer here at the top. Uh, but we've got some great volumes in here. Portable Machia Machiavelli is one of the great ones. Um, of course, it has The Prince, which, uh, I mean, even people who haven't read The Prince seem to know what The Prince is about and some quotes from it. Uh, but this one also has portions from the discourses, and the discourses are a much more, I think, relevant and valuable uh, aspect to Machiavelli's writing. Um, this one also has Belgafor and uh, Castruccio Castracani. There's a play from Machiavelli, The Mandrake Root, which is not... There, there's a reason we know Machiavelli is the writer of The Prince and then The Discourse is not as a writer of The Mandrake Root. But it's interesting. This is certainly a time uh, when scientists and philosophers and, and generals... Uh, people wrote plays to express their ideas. Galileo did this. So Machiavelli's in good company. Um, and there are some selections from his History of Florence, from his Art of War, but the, the, the selections from the discourses especially make this, I think, a more relevant volume and a great introduction to that side of Machiavelli's thinking. We jump way, way forward here uh, with the portable Oscar Wilde. And this is, I think, maybe if you can get a portable Oscar Wilde, you have probably all the Oscar Wilde you need because we get the full picture of Dorian Gray. You get De Profundis, which was... Um, unexpurgated in this edition and it was one of the early times where De Profundis was being published on, in an unexpurgated edition. Uh, you get the importance of being earnest and Salome, so two different sides to his plays, uh, some selections from different comedies, letters, uh, reviews, poems, phrases and philosophies for the young, the critic as artist, which is a key dialogue, um, and so this this actually ends up being a very good like one volume edition of Oscar Wilde. I think the one thing it may lack are yeah there is one fairy tale in here so if that's the oscar wilde you love go find an edition of his fairy tales but here of course we have a uh, the the row houses so the portable kipling and you can tell we are uh the great sunset there um this one has many many stories it has the man who would be king uh it has the strange ride of uh morhi jukes there are selections from the jungle books um just a couple of the Just So stories, a bunch of his poetry, a number of essays, the interview he does with Mark Twain. So th this is um, this is a very much a sampling of Kipling. It's not, you know, Kim complete and then the Jungle Books. It's very much a sampling of the many, many ways in which Kipling was writing, uh, but it's pretty strong. The portable Bernard Shaw, George Bernard Shaw, uh, again, Great cityscape there. This has a number of plays, so it has Pygmalion. Uh, we have Shakes versus Shav, the disastrous attempt to uh, criticize Shakespeare. Um, we have Devil's Disciple in the beginning, Heartbreak House. Um, from Man and Superman, this doesn't have all of Man and Superman, but it does have the Don Juan in Hell um, sort of scene excerpt. Um, and then it does have his uh, adventures of a the black girl in her search for God, which is uh, Bernard Shaw leveling many of the same criticisms he does in his plays, um, uh, but doing it in prose this time rather than as a play. Again, uh, one of the great things about the Viking Portable Library is that with each of these writers, you're getting their letters. And that, that you don't necessarily want to sit and read all the letters uh, that, that a great writer or, or personality wrote, but it certainly provides a different window into an insight into who they were. And so that's kind of uh, secret, the secret gem that exists in many of these editions. Then the portable Edmund Wilson. I actually just acquired this recently um, at a used bookstore in Atlanta when I was visiting uh, at a conference and hit up a place with Noah from everyone who reads it must converse. But uh, Edmund Wilson is, you know, it was not a fiction writer. So this is sort of a first nonfiction writer. Um, he's rather, he's a critic. Uh, he's, he's a biographer. He's, he's helping, uh, he's a man of letters and, or a person of letters. Um, so we have essays on Dickens, Karl Marx, Engels, Hemingway, uh, Grant, Ulysses S. Grant, Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., his own personal reminiscences from folks like F. Scott Fitzgerald or Edna St. Vincent Millay. Uh, again, selections from his 
uh, letters, and then some of his own sort of autobiographical memoirs. Move over to one of the great unsung Viking Portable Library volumes, the Portable Tolstoy. Um, Tolstoy is so famous for Anna Karenina and War and Peace that so many people forget that he was a prolific writer for many, many years and produced many different uh, forms and types of writing. And this is a volume that really addresses that. We have a great landscape here. Um, but this one has the uh, some of his shorter works, like the Kreutzer Sonata, uh, but it also has uh, prose he wrote while he was young, um, reflections on his time in the military. Uh, we have sections from the Cossacks. There are, uh, there's a play from him, The Power of Darkness. His What is Art essay, numerous other like philosophical and religious essays, and then a whole you know, selection um, from his stories. So Two Hussars, Strider, uh, The Raid, um, God Sees the Truth But Waits, What Men Live By, Master and Man. So there's all sorts of writing that he's doing around um, the many different events occurring in his life and sort of the different stages of his writing uh, as a major novelist with those two works. So this is one that I highly recommend, especially, I would say, especially for folks who don't like Tolstoy's novels. This might provide you with a very different insight into um, what he was capable of. The portable Nabokov. So we have all of Pnin. Uh, we have sections from a couple of other novels, but not the, the major one, uh, major ones, I should say, with uh, Lolita and Pale Fire. Those, those aren't in here. Uh, but what is are a number of Nabokov's <clears throat> uh, stories, including the great uh, the Vane Sisters, which is a, a very strong um, story by Nabokov. Yeah, the Vane Sisters. Terra Incognita, Cloud Castle Lake, Visit to the Museum. There's about 12 stories in here. There's a number of essays, uh, including his own introductions and forewords to his own works. Uh, his introductions and forewords then generally to other famous Russian works, so Gogol, Pushkin. Um, and then at the very end, about 20 pages of poetry from Nabokov. The portable 20th century reader, uh, Russian reader. So originally uh, in their early lineup, Penguin, our Viking Portable Library had a um, portable Russian reader that went through everything. Then when they did reprints, they split them into 19th and 20th century Russian readers. Um, this one would later end up even in a, a black spine edition. Uh, but this is a very, very good volume. So Tolstoy's represented Anna Akhmatova, one of my favorite uh, poets of all time, uh, Osip Mandelstin, Boris Pasternak, Yuri Alesha uh, with the um, full work Envy, which I want to say might have been republished by NYRB Classics now that I think about it. Uh, but later on, writers like Solzhenitsyn, um, George Vladimov, Andrei Sinyavsky, this is a very good work. This is a very good edition. We have um, Gorky's Recollections of Tolstoy, um, a, a single work from Tefi, uh, 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 Zamyatin's The Cave, you folks who wrote We. So this is a, uh, Isaac Babel has three se selections in here. Um, Shalomov has its three sections from the Kol Kalima Tales. Uh, so this is really, um, and then <laughs> a selection from Sasha Sokolov's School for Fools and uh, Vladimir Voyanovich. So there's a number of great writers in here who, <clears throat> because of uh, the Cold War, never, weren't necessarily being read outside of the Soviet Union or the sections of Eastern Europe. There's some really great writers in here. This is a volume, if you see it, I highly recommend it. Um, totally nonfiction, portable Karl Marx. We've got a factory here, a textile mill factory. Uh, we have the Complete Communist Manifesto here. This again is going to pull writings from across Marx's life. So there are some selections from Cap uh, Das Kapital at the very end. Um, there's the Complete Communist Manifesto, but there's writing and letters and essays before those periods, uh, writing and letters and essays in between those periods. Um, and so this, I think, you know, if, if you're interested in the thought of Marx or interested in uh, the influence that his thought had, whether on world history, which certainly had a huge influence, or on art, literature, whatever, um, this would be a, a great place to go, a great place to start. And then this is, a, again, a more recent acquisition for me, the portable Carl Jung. Uh, so this one was edited by Joseph Campbell, which is going to tell you this is not necessarily someone who is looking at Jung uh, for all of these great lessons on psychology, but rather these lessons on human consciousness and, and exploring the myth side of human consciousness. That's Campbell's interest, and that's 
that was a, a key aspect of Jung's writings, even though he's so famous <clears throat> as a, uh, as a, um, for the, the dream, you know, focus on dreams and, and psychology and psychiatry. So these, uh, these works, uh, the selections here are kind of an interesting choice. Um, but I've, I've learned quite a bit from it as I've been reading it and, uh, enjoyed this side of Jung's writing. So we have stages of life, structure of the psyche, um, concept of collective unconscious, relations between ego and unconscious, marriage as a psychological relationship, isn't it? Uh, and then moving forward, transcendent function, uh, analytical psychology to poetry, dream symbolism in relation to alchemy, spiritual problem of modern man, difference between Eastern and Western thinking. And then finally, in the final 150 pages, on synchronicity and the famous answer to Job. So even just, just read the answer to Job, you can probably find that online. Uh, I did want to show three other volumes that don't really fit in with those. This was part of a, again, after Penguin had acquired the Viking Portable Library, and they had these editions. Um, this one doesn't have like the little ship on it, but this is the Portable Saul Bellow. So you get Henderson the Rain King and Seize the Day. You get portions from a couple of other novels, and then you get some um, like short stories. So uh, there has since been volumes that collect Saul Bellow stories. There are volumes that collect multiple short novels from Bellow. Um, he, he was a very uh, critically acclaimed writer who I think is sort of fading from our consciousness. So I'd be curious to know if there's anybody who's a huge fan of Saul Bellow out there and if you have a specific work of his that you love. And then I have the portable Arthur Miller. This one does have the little ship, uh, but we have four plays. So we have Death of a Salesman and The Crucible, which I think almost anybody would expect. The Incident at Vichy and The Price, two versions of The Misfits, and then a couple of stories. So we have Fame, uh, Fitter's Night, um, and then uh, selections from In Russia. So this, you know, is sort of a great one volume Arthur Miller, if that's what you're looking for. But the last one is one of the great, uh, great Penguin, or Viking Portable Libraries, <laughs> published by Penguin, the Portable North American Indian Reader. Um, and this was one of the first attempts to really get outside of what within the Viking Portable Library had been very much and would remain very much a Western European and um, North, you know, U.S. writers and specifically U.S. writers who are white. Uh, this is really the, the work that sort of breaks that mold and starts to suggest that the Viking Portable Library would one day, many decades later, branch out to include some really, really great volumes that they produced uh, right in um, about 10, 12 years ago. But this one's very strong and uh, it has uh, very early you know, um, narratives from the First Nations uh, and, and from many, many, many different um, tribes and nations. Then it moves into poetry and oratory, uh, ultimately culture contact, and then the image and anti-image. So ways in which uh, Native Americans were perceived and then ways in which they perceived themselves and perceived uh, what was happening to them, the atrocities that were happening to them. So this is a great, great volume. Anyways, these were more of the Viking Portable Library, and there's still more to come. So I hope everybody's doing well. Thank you.